In this session, I'll cover how to create a speedometer chart. There's been debate on the web on whether or not speedometer charts useful for Excel dashboards, and I'll leave it up to you to research that. But I thought, in keeping in line with the dashboard analogy, having a video on how to create a speedometer probably was appropriate. So let's go into how to create it. Now looking at the speedometer here, this is basically composed of two charts, a donut chart and a pie chart. And with these two charts, it's, it's a combination chart when you put two charts together. Uh, in the donut portion, these values are represented here um, in this table. So we've got our start, we've got our red value which is 15 here, our yellow value which is 45 here, our green value which is 40 here, and this end value which is really invisible down here. It's, it has no fill. It's below here. And for our little pointer, this 22, this is kind of uh, a trick here, but our, our 22, 1, 177, those, those represent the values in the pie chart. And once we get into how to create the pie chart, you'll see where they show up. So let's go ahead and create our speedometer. Let me delete this. We're going to select our range first for our donut chart. We'll go to select that, go to insert, the charts, other charts, and our donut. And so we see here that our donut chart is oriented a little differently from where we want it to be. So what we're going to do is select a donut chart, right click that. Under format data series, there's going to be a series option where we can rotate it. So we're going to rotate it to 270 degrees. Let's see, we are there. And we're also going to have this, this fill, the end fill. We're going to click on that and see now the bubbles just select that end fill. And we're going to select no fill. So it basically is invisible. We also want to select different colors for these. So we had, we had our red region here, which we don't need to change. We've got our yellow region, which we probably want to change to yellow. We go to fill, solid fill, and yellow. So you notice that you know even when I was in this format data point window, I didn't need to close it and select it. That's one nice thing about Excel 2007 here. I don't know if they do it in Excel 2003, but it's cool because you don't have to go in and out of the window to go ahead and change any of the attributes. Well, let's go back and change this final row, this uh, this final value, this green. We want to make that instead of a purple. We want to make that green. So we have green here. So close, go ahead and close that. And we're pretty much done with our donut chart. Now we want to go and create our pie chart. We'll go ahead and select the plot area. Right click. Oops, actually we don't need to right click. There's In Excel 2007 we've got our little ribbon up here where we can add additional data. So we can just go ahead and select data. And what we want to do is we want to add uh, additional data. So we we'll go ahead and click add and under the series value we want to select these values here our value our pointer and our end values so go ahead and select that whoops what I did was I didn't I still had this in here so I'll go ahead and delete that so basically we want these values here right click OK and since and click OK here and since we're in we were in a donut chart, it just created another donut chart. But what we can do is change that to a pie chart. So we go ahead and select our second donut chart and go up here where it says change chart type and click on pie. We got our pie selected and click OK. Now we also need to orient the pie chart to match that of the donut chart. But you see here we have our first series here which is this 177. That little sliver here is our one value and our value that we want is 22. So we'll select our pie chart, right click that, format data series, and we're going to change the rotation to 270. Now let's fine tune it here, make that a zero. Now we also want to ch change this and give it uh, a no fill. So we go ahead and select on that. 
Now we see our bubbles that kind of select this area here. We go under fill and click the no fill radio button. So that gives us no fill. And we also want to get rid of this fill too because we don't need that one. What we want is our basically our pointer area here. So basically this is our our value. And it's kind of misleading when you really think about it because uh, we want our value but our pointer is one degree in addition to this value. So that's probably in a way sometimes why there's a debate on whether or not a speedometer is useful. That's probably a part of it. But let's go ahead and click on that. We want to get rid of that. We get rid of the fill there. And we want to change this fill of our little pointer. We click that. And we change it to black. Nice contrast. Okay. So we click close. And we probably don't need our legend here. Click that and press delete. And we want to have our little label here. So show the label of our value. So we go ahead and click on our pointer. Oops, I clicked everything. Clicked once, click again, and we've got no we've got now we've got the value here. And it's a little fine tuning to click for that pointer. So now we've got our pointer. Now we right click, we want to add a data label. Now the label data label shows what it should show, the pointer value, but we want to change that to indicate the value. So we're going to go ahead and double click or just click in this area and go up into the formula bar and press equal and then just the cell value because it could change. So we'll go ahead and press that cell value. It will indicate E2, press return and it will give us 22. So if we ever wanted to change the value of our gauge here, we like we maybe we'll say 66 or 78 that would give us our value and if you notice when we're creating when we're creating these these are static values here but for our gauge that's there, there are also static values here but our point our end is basically 200 minus the sum of our value and pointer and um, basically we have our in in our uh, the values for our donuts we have our the total if you notice the total value is 200 here so we want to make sure that uh, our values for the pi coincide to 200 so 200 minus these two values so that's how we create a speedometer chart hope that helps thanks for watching